Hi, I'm Izzy, and this is Dizzy Quilts and Sews. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a quick and easy reusable gift bag for a bottle of wine. So if you're anything like me, you get invited to a dinner that you didn't expect to have to go to, and you scramble to go get a bottle of wine before you go or something else, and then realize you don't have a pretty bag to put your bottle of wine into. Well, I have a super quick and easy reusable bag that you can make, and you can make a few of them and just have them on the side waiting for the occasion. So here's what our beautiful gift bag looks like. It fits pretty much any bottle of wine, unless it's a very, very big or very, very small one but any regular bottle of wine will fit in this. It is reversible, so you can pick any fabric you want and all of the seams are hidden between the two layers, so it is reversible. All you need are two fat quarters and some ribbon. So let's get to it. Okay, so here's what you're gonna need for one bag. Um, and this bag is going to fit like a regular size wine bottle. So I, you're going to need two fat quarters. I've already cut mine, so I'm going to use these two black ones. So this one here, which is pretty matte, and that's going to be my lining. And this one, which is has like sparkles or metallic thread in it, and that's going to be my outer. I've cut each one into two pieces, 18 inches long by seven inches wide. So you're gonna do that for both your fat quarters. And you're also gonna need some ribbon. I'm gonna use, I had this in my stash. This is three eighths wide red satin ribbon that I probably have had forever. And it's gonna go nicely with the black and it's gonna look kind of Christmassy, so I think that's gonna work. And that's it, you need thread in your machine that is going to match the exterior fabric because you're gonna be stitching a channel for the ribbon and your stitching is gonna show on the outside of the bag. So if you can pick thread that matches, that's great. I'm sewing with black thread. So this is step number one. Prepare your fat quarters, cut, cut them each into two pieces, 18 by seven inches. Remember to press your fabric before you cut it. And this makes sure that you've got accurate pieces to work with. All right, our next step is gonna be to mark the channel where, or the opening of the channel where you're gonna thread or we're gonna thread our ribbon. So your channel should be about 12 inches from the bottom of your piece. So I've got my bottom here, like right off camera basically. So I'm gonna measure about 12 inches from that. Place my ruler and then make a mark on either side. All right, so I've got my marks. And then one inch above that, I'm gonna make another mark because our channel is gonna be about one inch wide. All right, so I've got my marks here. And actually, oh, well, that was really dumb of me. Mark that on the wrong side of your fabric because you need to see your marks <laughs> when you're stitching and you're gonna be stitching right sides together. So let's try that again. 12 inches from the bottom and put some marks there and then about one inch higher than that. Put more marks. And I mean, if you want to mark both fabrics, both pieces, you can certainly do that, but you don't have to do that. You can just pick one and you can sew with that one on top. 
So just make sure you're seeing your marks, that they're very, very clear. Because you're going to need to stop sewing at those marks. So now I'm going to place pins here. I don't usually pin for quilting cotton because it's pretty easy to control. But my marks aren't super visible, so I'm going to put pins here. And what we're going to do is sew across one side. So starting on one side, you're going to stitch at one quarter inch seam allowance to your first mark. Back stitch, stop stitching. You can cut your thread or just move your piece of fabric forward. Start stitching again at the next mark. Back stitch, stitch all the way down by again with a quarter inch. Sew across the bottom, up the other side, and do the same thing at the other opening. Stop, back stitch, start again, back stitch, and go all the way to the top. So we are going to do that for the lining pieces and our outer fabric. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here. All right, so I've got my pieces all sewn together, right sides together. I've got my gaps here for the channel. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna box our bottom corners. So you're gonna grab while your pieces are still right sides together, you're gonna pinch the side seam and the bottom seam, pushing them both in the same direction until they are basically one on top of the other and you've got a nice triangle. Next, you're gonna take a ruler, so try to put it down as flat as you can. You're gonna take a ruler and measure an inch and a half from the tip of your triangle and mark a line across your corner. Hopefully you can see that. So this marker is not, oh yeah, okay, it shows. So I'm gonna put a pin in this so you can see what I've done here. So you're pinching your side and your bottom seam. So my side seam is here. Hold on. My side seam is here. This is the side of my bag. My bottom is here. And I'm pinching the two together. And, and I feel with my fingers to make sure they're one on top of the other. And then from the very tip of your corner, you're going to measure up an inch and a half and mark a line across where like where my pin is okay and you're gonna stitch on top of that line and you're gonna do this for all four corners so the other corner of this um, outside bag and the two corners of your lining all right so i'm just gonna leave my pin in here for now and take care of my other corner so again i'm pinching my side seam together with my bottom seam and with my fingers I'm feeling to make sure that both seams are right on top of one another and then I'm going to put this as flat as I can measure from the tip of that triangle about an inch making sure my line is going to be perfectly perpendicular to the seam and then I'm going to put a pin in that just to keep it together and make it easier to sew. So now I've got my two corners pinned and that's going to make a nice flat bottom for my bag. All right. This one's gonna be a little tougher because this fabric is a little thicker. All right, so pushing my seams one on top of the other. 
Okay, this feels pretty good. Putting it flat on my table, taking my ruler and measuring from the tip and then marking across and then placing a pin. There we go. Last corner. Now the more care you take with lining up your seams here, the nicer your corners or the straighter your corners are going to be. They're gonna be very nice and square. So take your time here. And make sure that you're marking a nice perpendicular, gosh, line with your seam here. And that way you'll have a very nice square bottom. All right, so I'm going to sew all four corners and then I'll come back here and we will trim these corners just to reduce the bulk and make sure our bottle sits flat inside the bag. All right, so I've got my four corners sewn. And now what I need to do is trim the excess fabric here and leave about a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, I've got my rotary cutter here. So you don't need to be super exact here. Just leave about a quarter inch. There we go. Here's one. Two. And there we go. So now our bags have nice flat bottoms. All right, now at this point, what you could do is go press your side seams open, basically. And that way you'll have a nice clean edge where the opening or the openings, I should say, are going to be. You're not gonna be able to press them open all the way to the bottom because we pressed this or pushed this to one side, but just do the best you can, basically pressing your side seams of both bags open. And then we'll move on to the next step. Forgot to say, while you're at your pressing table, press the top raw edges of each, of the lining and the exterior about one inch to the wrong, or one half inch, sorry, to the wrong side so that it looks like this. And you're gonna do this to the lining. So pressing about a half inch at the top. And you're gonna do this to your exterior, again, pressing half inch to the wrong side. All right, so I've got my seams pressed open. I've got my half inch. Um, pressed to the wrong side at the top of both my lining and my exterior fabric. Now we're going to insert our uh, lining into our exterior fabric wrong sides together. So to do that, I'm going to put my exterior bag right side out. All right, I'm gonna to try to push out my corners as nice as I can. Just gonna use my nails, but if you have a point turner, you could do that too. All right, so I've got my exterior bag right side out. Now I'm gonna take my lining and put it inside it, matching 
the side seams and our openings. Okay, there we go, there's my side seam. So I'm gonna place a pin here. If you have clips, oh actually, I'm gonna go get my clips because that's gonna be way better. If you have these wonder clips, you can use those to place where your seams are lining up and that way they will not budge and you also won't prick yourself with the pins all right so let's put a couple more clips there just to make sure nothing's gonna move Beautiful. All right, now just put your hand inside. Make sure your bottoms are, like your corners are matching nicely. Because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew the channel of our opening. So basically what we need to do is lie this down as flat as we can, making sure that our openings are matching. Where are you opening? There you are. Where is it? There it is. No, that's not it. There we go. So you might need to twist your lining just a tad to make sure that your openings are together because if not, that would be bad. All right, put a pin in it just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Find the opening on the other side. There it is. That was a lot easier to find. Okay, beautiful. Put a pin in that. Okay. Okay, there we go. So now all you want to do is make sure that your two layers are perfectly together and as flat as they can be. And we are going to mark a line on both sides of this opening. So basically note where your opening is, is starting right here and like the top and the bottom of your opening basically. So your top is here, your bottom is here. Do the same on the other side and mark two stitching lines across and you'll know that this is where you need to stitch. Now use a pencil or something that is going to disappear. Alternatively, what you could do is just mark one line exactly in the center of your opening. So like here. Like if I mark this line here, this is basically the center of my opening and I could stitch one half inch on either side of this line. And then hopefully this will disappear. All right, so my opening is right here. Right here, so I marked in the center And then on the other side, my opening is right here. So, okay, well, it should land about here. So obviously my line is crooked. Let's fix that. There we go. So now if I stitch at a half inch on either side, 
I'm going to have a one inch opening. All right, now I'm going to need to do the exact same thing on the other side. So my line should start right here to match the other one. Right here. Now I'll just join my two dots. And then I'll stitch at a half inch on either side. All right, now if you have, let me spin you around so you can see my sewing machine. Okay, I don't want you to fall down or anything. So if you have a free arm on your machine, like I do, this is gonna be a lot easier because I can just scoot my bag without getting the pins stuck in there. Hold on. Well, I might have to take my clips off. There we go. And then all I need to do is basically spin the bag around the free arm. If you don't have one of those, you could turn your bag outside inside out and then mark on the inside turn it out inside out again and then stitch on the inside like stitch like this way if you know what i mean and then just keep turning it either way make sure that you're stitching your channel and that your fabric stays as flat as possible and that you are not stitching your bag closed. So I will do, I will sew my stitching and my channel <laughs> and when I'm done, I'll come back. All right, so I cut my pieces of ribbon. So I've got two pieces about 24 inches long and I've got a safety pin that I'm gonna to use to thread this ribbon through our channel. So find the opening on the side and insert the safety pin between the two layers of fabric into the channel. And then basically using your fingers, push your safety pin along the channel until you reach the side or the opening that you went into originally. So you're gonna go around the whole bag. And this is probably the least fun part of this. All right, so when you get to the other side of the, in the opening, make sure you don't come out. Just keep going around the entire bag. Trying not to open the safety pin. <laughs> All right. Now I'm at the original opening, so I'm going to pull it through and take my safety pin out. All right, so now your ribbon should look like this. All right. Now take your other piece of ribbon, put your safety pin through that one. And now this time you're gonna start from the opposite side. So where you haven't gone in basically. And now you're gonna do the same thing, thread it through all the way around the bag. All right. Get your first ribbon out of the way so that you can just continue on the other side of that opening. There we go. Okay, 
Okay, here we are. Now, if you don't want your ribbon, if you've got the kind of ribbon like mine, that frays, you can put some fray check um, to stop it from fraying. And then take the two sides or the two ends that came out of the same uh, side and you can make a knot so they stay together. There we go, like this. And then do the same thing with the other side. And here's your fabulous looking bag. And to close it, just pull on the two sides and then it opens nicely because the ribbon is nice and slippery because it's a satin ribbon. All right. And there you have it. A gorgeous, gorgeous wine bottle, reusable gift bag, which is perfect for just a regular dinner or for a holiday dinner. So there you have it. All right, well, I hope you liked my tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for visiting. Please like the video if you liked it and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks again, and I will see you soon.